Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Insightful Moment. My name is Jare Tiamiu. As we are approaching the election now, you know, we need to start questioning uh, the agenda of all these people. We need to start talking about what they have, most especially now that we have candidates. They are no more aspirants. They have been uh, elected by their parties to go and represent them. And now we have to start asking them what do they have for the people of the state. And today, we'll be starting with the candidate of Young Democratic, Young Progressive Party, YPP, and that is Dr. Ademola Bayonle. Dr. Ademola Bayonle will be telling us what he has and then what are the agenda uh, of his party for the people of the state. Uh, Dr. Ademola Bayonle joins us from Mugan, that is AIDA, the local government area of the state. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Let me start from here. Can we know you more? You know, the people of Osun are actually interested in know who want to govern them. You are now the candidate of YPP. Firstly, I say congratulations to you. Now, please, who is Dr. Adebayo Ademola? My name is Dr. Ademola Bayonle. I'm a native of Bogon, I eat at the local government. Uh, I'm a medical doctor by profession. Uh, I work uh, both in Nigeria and outside the country. I'm also the founder of Dr. Ademola Bayon, the Youth Foundation, popularly known as DAP Foundation. Uh, I'm the YPP gubernatorial candidate for Washington State 2022 elections. Uh, I'm a very, uh, I'm, a, I'm somebody who has a penchant for progressive uh, environment. I like to build, uh, I like to plan for the future. Thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Bayonle, now let's start. Uh, you are of the YPP. Uh, you know, you are one of those people who actually want to distort, uh, uh, disrupt uh, the policies in the state the way it is and to the way it's supposed to be. Tell me, as a young person, how are you mobilizing the young people in the state? Because we know they constitute a larger percentage of uh, the electorate. Uh, yes, so we have. Uh been on ground for a little bit. We have used the time that is on our side to go around the 30 plus one local government in Nation State to speak to the heart of youth. And uh, of course, to remind them that uh, the most important thing that can actually improve their life is a better government. So we have organized different programs around the state, uh, mentoring programs. We have organized so many gatherings for the youth uh, to come together to start this conversation. Uh, we've uh, thrown things out of different areas, uh, organized football competitions, avenues where youths can come together to have decent conversations. And we are lucky that uh, you see they've heard and uh, they are acting into our voices. Because again, uh, what is on the ground, ground is obvious and uh, we are happy to have them. And they, have, they are all ready for 2022 election. Let me now ask you now, uh, you know, we have some people have the opinion that we have two leading political parties in the state and then as it is in the in the country at large we have the apc and the pdp now you are coming from the ypp and we know that the only position the ypp has in this country is one senator for manambra how are you ensuring that you plant the love of your party into the heart of the people of the state yes uh, so, yes, definitely, it's true that we have two major political parties and, uh, of course, uh, in and out, they have the majority seats in the legislature and, uh, of course, a lot of governors, uh, senators, and uh, all from either PDP or APC. Well, we can't continue to do the same thing and expect a different result. And that's why uh, parties like Young Progressive Party, we are here to actually flip that odds. We want to make sure that we give people a different option. Uh, these two parties, what they have done is what we're experiencing today. And if you agree with me, a lot of people are not comfortable. Uh, and of course, everybody is obvious. It's, it's very obvious to everybody. We want to make sure that we don't continue to do the same thing and think that's life will change. YPP has strategically positioned uh, itself to make sure that we give more people uh, especially the young people, a chance in this in this uh, in this in, in, in Nigeria. So uh, we are we are very well. It's obvious that the parties we have 
uh, I've seen major ones, but of course YPP is here to stay and it has produced a senator like you said. And we are sure and we're positive that in, in this coming election, we're also going to be victorious. Uh, it's, 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 there's no gain saying to it that even though we have two major ones, they don't perform very well fully. And uh, we have to change that. People are tired of those parties and we are giving them that option right now. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Bayonle, I would like us to go on a very short break now so that we solve some technical issues that we are having. And after that, we'll come back. Then we'll now, di we'll now discuss your agenda in full. And also, we'll discuss uh, uh, your political antecedents. Uh, where were you before? Have you had any post? And then where do you want to start? Please stay with me. We'll go on a very short break now. We'll be right back in a very short moment. Welcome back from that very short break and my guest is still here with us. We are speaking um, with uh, Dr. Adimola Bayonli, the candidate of the YPP. And we are talking about what he has uh, for the people of the state. Uh, Dr. Bayonli, thank you for staying with us. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Doctor, now, uh, I wanted to ask the other time before we went on the break. Tell us uh, your political participation in the past because some people are of the opinion that experience is also very important for somebody who wants to hold a position as big as governor. So please tell us what has been your, your participation in politics before. Uh, you see, uh, people uh, uh, said about political position and experience is very sometimes laughable because you see the antecedents of people we have in government uh, actually speaks otherwise. I mean, we have an incumbent who's been chief of staff for eight years and uh, now going another three years or four years as governor, and we can see largely what the result is. But you see, the point is that we don't have leaders who have the character and the capacity to build uh, an environment for us. Uh, people who actually don't have don't have the mind. They are they are more politicians than leaders, and uh, in my small. The small time uh, that I've lived, uh, I've held various positions uh, in and out of the country, uh, uh, maintained the integrity while in all those positions. I work uh, in Boston, uh, Boston uh, Brigham's and Women's Hospital, Harvard Medical School, and in that capacity, worked with so many people um, around the world, Australia, Canada, India, and uh, well, I think what matters the most is literally having a leadership mindset more than even the experience that you're probably gathered. Some of these people who have gathered political experience use it, of course, against us. And we work with them in different capacities too, even to get into our office. I've worked with a lot of these political uh, uh, people before, but what I notice is that they are not leaders. You see, leaders actually have a building mindset. They want to improve their community. They don't just want the vote of the people and uh, ignore them. So uh, what we are bringing to the board is a different, is a different, uh, a fresh hand. Uh, somebody who has, of course, walked across the world and seen the difference between what we have at home and what we have outside, and uh, how we can leverage whatever resources we have on ground to close that gap. We want to make sure that uh, the future is it is ready for us and uh, we can build that future to the tune that we, we, we desire or we deserve. Uh, so that's, that's the hand that we are bringing. More than whatever experience that people have seen. Look at Nigeria today. Uh, we have seen many people who lost in the 70s. They are back again as president and back again into the political space. But you see the, the calamity that we find ourselves. So I think more than, more than anything, uh, Nigeria should be looking at fresh hands who have actually not had that uh, incorporate the, the, the bad examples of bad ex, ex, uh, experience, gathered everything and bring it forth. So what I think uh, should people should be glad about this ambition is that as a fresh hand uh, who has a progressive mindset, who has seen the world, seen the difference of where people are and where they should be. Okay. Uh, let me now ask you, now you've talked about your experience and then how, why uh, fresh hands are uh, actually needed in government. But I would like to ask, uh, me, me looking at sector by sector, I mean sectorially now, uh, what sector do you think uh, we have 
untapped uh, wealth and then that's your you know your government will by lots most uh, maybe maybe the sector that you want to anchor your government on if you are elected as governor of the state uh, there's really nothing that uh, we have taxed in this state that's what that's one thing i would say for sure uh i in fact i i can argue that we do not even have an economy uh, if i ask you just basic questions just to find out uh you even know yourself that we do not uh, i don't know what we produce in Oshun state do you have do you know what we produce uh, can you give me anything we distribute that is Oshun specifically from Oshun or Oshun is a, a major distributor uh is there any trade that we engage in uh so and of course our, lead, our our politicians have run on that under the umbrella that is a civil servant state because all what they want to do is pay salaries. So in fact, I don't even think we have any economy to start with. But back to your question, there are many viable areas that Australian people can leverage on, and we will be looking at. Uh, we have the land mass. We have more than a million hectares of land, free of charge, good weather condition that can support a lot of agricultural produce the maize, the cassavas, the cocoa, uh, palm, palm panel, and what have you, and also help with unemployment. That is one untapped area. Uh, the other point is the tourism potential this state has. Uh, we house uh, Ife, uh, Ile Ife, which everybody knows as the source. Uh, Ile Ife today should, should probably be like the mecca of Nigeria, where people troop in and out uh, to, of course, enjoy the traditions of that land. Uh, there's so many topographical uh, topography that we have that, in, that, that encourages tourism. Uh, UNESCO has, has designated some of our centers as, uh, as, as, as very great places for tourism. So in fact, a lot of tourism would even help people troop into the state to also uh, help, uh, 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 what's it called, service some of, this, some of the unskilled labor that we have if we leverage on the tourism potentials, when they come, they buy food. When they come, they drink our water. When they come, they assess our medical care. When they come, they cut their hair, the barbers, the hairdressers, everybody make money out of it. So tourism is another great, great one that I think that we have not tapped. Uh, healthcare, education, so many areas that I think that we are going to be focusing on. But again, we want to start from the foundation. We want to make sure that we we create basic amenities for people. Uh, in the Oshun State today, there are areas that have not had light in 10 years. We, don't, we want to make sure that, you see, people can have electricity. You see, when you have electricity, we'll be able to attract investors. And of course, when investors come, they can create jobs. So those are the things that we want to start doing. Dr. Adimola, allow me to put in place. Uh, I would like you to, you know, from what that point that you have just said, you said uh, electricity. We know electricity is a national problem. How do you want to solve uh, a national problem at the state level? Great. So, you see, one of the things you have to understand is that uh, electric generating electricity is now on the concurrent list uh, that the state's governments can actually be involved in. And what we want to do is not use all these hydroelectric power. We have all the sun wasting away. We have to leverage on renewable energy. And that's what we want to do. Uh, we have to progress and with emphasis on the word progression. Uh, we have to create a progressive community. The world is moving into so many things. And if we do not have electricity, we will not be able to catch up with that. A lot of our students now study virtually. If you cannot charge or you don't have electricity, you can't do it. Right now, I'm in the gun, I'm talking to you. Imagine we don't have electricity to either charge or you don't have electricity to there. Life is becoming easy, but you know what? We have to create that foundation where people can work with. When electricity comes in, of course, we have better internet, we have better uh, better security system, we have good roads. All those basic elements are essential components of growth, and that's what we want to be focusing on. Uh, our electricity plan, in fact, in the, in, in the first four in, in, in the first uh, four years, we want to make sure that we increase the coverage from about 60% that we have now to at least 80 or 90%. And of course, we want to leverage on renewable energy uh, to power things. It is more solar now. Everybody's going solar. Uh, we or should used to enjoy probably like 10, 15 hour electric supply before, but it's going down because again, there's more load on what we have presently. So we have to start thinking about ways to supplement and of course increase. 
uh, so that Australia can be the first state in Nigeria with 24 hours electricity. And everybody, no matter what your profession is, if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're an artisan, if you're making bread, you need electricity. In fact, your cost of production will even reduce if you have electricity. You don't have to use generator. People can op even open late at night instead of closing at 6 o'clock or something. You can open late because there's light. The security situation will improve. So some of those things, without basic amenities like electricity, it's going to be difficult to, 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 to move, to, to build on. So those are going to be our focus. Apart from, of course, like I said, job creation, uh, industrialization plan. We want to make sure that people, people have great welfare packages. Uh, we take care of our old, we take care of our young, we make sure we have good education in the state, enviable education. So uh, those are some of the packages that we have. But well, I'm happy that the people of Australian space are going to see something different from what they've experienced over the years. Okay, uh, I, I still want us to stay on that uh, line, and that is, I would like you to talk about to us on what's your plan for infrastructure. We know how it is now, you know, the present government is actually saying that they have done some things, and then the past government is actually calling, uh, called itself uh, what we call uh, the symbol of modern notion, and then they said they were able to, you know, improve the infrastructure development of the state. Uh, where do you think we are? Do you think we are where we're supposed to be? And then if you are elected as a governor, or do you want to take it to where you think uh, we should be at this time? Of course, the, the word is where we should be. Uh, that's where we want to take it to. There's a lot of infrastructural decay that we have. And unfortunately, in 2022, we're still thinking about building. I, I, I thought that we'll start talking about efficiency how efficient our hospitals are, instead of saying we are building hospitals, uh, which is unfortunate. I think the previous government, uh, before this one, probably tried a little bit. They gave us mega schools, which unfortunately, they are, they are some, some of them are collapsing at this point. Uh, but we need massive infrastructural uh, development in the state. Look at our primary health centers. Look at our hospitals, our major hospitals. Look at our schools. We have schools here that half of it is almost uh, uh, is almost collapsing. So we also need a facelift. Look at our local governments. Look at look look at most local governments that are not even in the capital. You see the rot there. So uh, you see, it's an eyesore, and I think that any reasonable government or any reasonable person should know that you see these people need to leave. Uh, we cannot continue to do the same thing and expect different results. Like I said, our country, our state is decaying. I went to a local government around Ogopo a couple of days back. You see, literally see uh, algae or something growing on the on the building. It's, it looks really terrible. And of course, people come into work every day using that facility. Uh, there's so many, but even look at our roads. Look at our roads everywhere, intra-community roads, they are horrible. They do not look good at all. And uh, I do not sincerely know what our political class are doing. But definitely within the facelift, Oshun is a very important state in Nigeria. Uh, it is the state of the living spring. It is time that we spring it up and we make sure that we make it living. Uh, we're human beings, we need to inhabit a, a, a comfortable place. So, uh, of course, the people of Oshun already know this. They, they've seen the decay over time. Our population is growing, and it's growing very fast. And we are feeding from that small, unmaintained, not maintained, uh, not built infrastructure. And it's like we're, we're, we're forcing it down, we're collapsing it. So we need a serious and uh, an efficient and a progressive-minded government to make sure that we can lift ourselves up. So yes, infrastructure is extremely important to us. I will be making, will be giving it a face please. Uh, Dr. Bayonle, before I let you go, I would like to do two things. Number one, I would like to text your uh, financial uh, expertise. You know, uh, the, the past administration incurred uh, uh, some huge uh, debt that this present government is saying that uh, they have been able to pay 70 billion out of it. And then even though you have not been able to tell us what the actual amount is, 
but the uh, you know the reports that we are getting that we have been getting since the inception of this administration is uh, is about is running to I mean the debt uh, incurred by the last administration is about two hundred billion naira, which means. Uh, this present administration may still live more than 100 billion with the way they have said they have been paying it. Now, we are looking at it last month, the state had negative allocation from the federal uh, government. That is the federal allocation. Now, if you look at it, if you are the governor, assuming you are the governor now, and then you are having that kind of uh, reports, the allocation is less than 10% or 20% of what is needed to do some basic things in the state. How are you trying? How are you planning to ensure that uh, you solve the uh, the finances of the state to ensure that even when we have positive fund, the government is still not uh, on 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 its knee, as some people think uh, it's supposed to have been by now. Uh, do you want to put your financial expertise in this? Uh, so the the states, uh, the debt the debt profile for the state is actually hopeful. If, uh, we can take some time to look at it. Uh, we're holding about, I think, about 170 billion or thereabout. And the short term loans uh, from Sukuk and some conventional bonds, they've been paid off. Uh, the long term ones will probably be in that debt still, I think, 2028 or thereabout. Uh, but the issue, the issue is not debt. I don't have a problem. And we can't actually even borrow. Don't let them say they are not borrowing. We have a debt to a revenue ratio that is more than 200. It is really high. Nobody is going to borrow you money if you have that kind of debt ratio. It's like you are owing 10 people or 20 people for you are approaching another person to say, come and borrow me. Who wants to borrow you that kind of money again? We also don't have any reserve. Look and look at our file. Zero, 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 naira. We do not have reserve. So uh, the issue is that, you see, we have so many things that our, our, our government our politicians, they are not looking inwards. They are not looking inwards at all. You will ask me, how, or have, let's ask ourselves, projects like the bridge that they just did at Olaya, how much was that, that was that bridge? What do you think we could have used that money for that would generate more revenue for us uh, instead of doing capital projects without any economic importance to the state? So that's one of the questions you should start asking ourselves. And what you will realize is that we are actually not looking inwards. We're not looking into our natural resources. We're not looking out at how we can leverage on the, on, the, on the resources we have within the state to actually even help us with some of these debt and make us even sustainable, uh, even though we have a lot of uh, financial money. And uh, of course, look at the mining sector. It's a mess already. A lot of our water bodies are being polluted right now. Uh, and of course, everybody is shouting. Uh, we, I, I, I think this government needs to go back to the table and literally talk to themselves what they are, what what plan they have, because uh, I'm sure they will be gone by July 16th. Well, the the, the the damage they will they will have done, I'm sure it will be for a long time. So I don't think anybody should don't let us, don't let them um, lie to us that they don't have money. We have the resources to have that money. What I think that we should be doing is the little resource we have, we should be using it to build more things that can generate revenue for us, instead of us doing... Are you saying that uh, Austin can be run on IGR? Is that what you are saying? We have an IGR of about 19.6 billion. Uh, it is low, yes. It is low, definitely. Our budget is eating about 100 billion. But again, look at that IGR, look at our budget, look at how it is allocated. Even running governance alone, in this state is costing us about 20 billion. So, uh, and we have not done anything. We have about 12 sectors. Governance and administration alone is taking almost 20% of that sector of, of the old budget. So what's the plan of the government? So that's all those things that you have to be looking at to know that, okay, if we reduce the cost of our governance, maybe we will actually help the people. Maybe we can put that money, divert that money into something different. If when we get some money, or we do some private uh, partnership so that uh, they can create industries, let people get wealth, tax them, let them let us get money, increase our IGR, and uh, maintain the economy. Maybe that will help us generally. Uh, there are many strategies. There's this book strategy, uh, if you've heard about it, in such a way that you can actually attract um, attract private sector into 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 the into the state. So what I'll be looking for. Or what I will, I will be looking at. I think the debt profile, of course, is not is not a friendly one. 
But what we have to do is to make sure that whatever resources we have, we optimize it. And we don't do it for political reasons. Uh, you see, I think the, the government still needs to come to us and apologize to us for creating a breach, like I said, without any economic importance. If you are spending about four billion naira on a bridge, you, uh, or do you want to tell me what economic importance that bridge is for? And you say we Some people will say one was built in your own town uh, by the past administration, the Bagan Bridge. One was what? Say that again. The Bagan Bridge was actually built by that administration in your hometown. Yes, exactly, but I'm not saying it's... Uh, are you criticizing that too? Or do you think that is necessary? No, I, you see, I, I'm not even talking about if one was built in a time or one was not built. And is the is the is the point is that are we is there, you know, with all this debt profile that we have? Even if you build a bridge in my in my house, if I don't need it, you don't need to bridge build it. It's not a tribal or a, a issue of the one was free. I'm trying to say that you know the past administration also built one. Do you think that one is necessary? Well, I think there's nothing that is not necessary long run, but what is immediately important? That's what I would say. We are in such a very we're in such a dilemma these days that uh, there's so many hunger, there's so many unemployment. I think our priorities should be how to develop this state. Look at our healthcare is collapsing. Look at our primary health centers. They lie to us every day that they are renovating some 323 primary health centers. Go to them. When you go there as a pregnant woman, is it a renovation that you want to eat or you want to actually get a good health care delivery? So what I'm saying, yeah, so what, what we have to start thinking about is that when we have these resources, we use these resources judiciously so that we can build our state. We don't do things for political reasons. Now, they've not commissioned that, that bridge. I'm sure they are waiting for elections to come closer so that they will say that this is what, yeah, so that, they, yeah, they are using it already, but they say they, will, they they just open it so that people can start using it. They will now commission it when it's close to election. So that, but people are brilliant now. You see, people are smart. If you like commission it one day before election, it is a waste of resources. If you also compare that bridge to the bridge that was built in Bogdan, like you said, you know that that's, uh, that is not a bridge as far as I'm concerned. It looks like a shady job, job, like a job that was just done for political point. And I think that uh, we should actually question them. I, 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 will, I, will, I will advise or I will suggest that independent uh, uh, auditors should actually look into that. Because in a state where we use mini buses, we use mini buses that can only take seven people per time. In a state where we don't have any traffic lights, I do not understand what traffic we are trying to we are trying to stop by building a four billion naira bridge. I think it's a, it's, a, it's an humongous waste of resources, and uh, we should look further into it. Yes. All right, thank you. Now that we are winding down, I would like you to say your final your final word to uh, the people of the state, most especially the young one. Why did I actually, you know, single out the young people? The statistics showed us that the last election we had around forty two percent turnout, and if you look at it, there is a projection that the population of Oshun will be around five million by uh, you know February last February this year. So if and. They said 58% of this population will be young, 51% of this population will be young people in the age of 29 and then downward. Which means if we have 5 million, it means 50% of that will be 2.5 million. Then let's now look at it. If you look at it down, 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 you now look at people between 18 and that 29. The young ones, you will see that they have more than even the number of people that voted on the last election. How do you, what would be your message to young people in the state to participate in the electoral system, most especially on the election there, which is voting? Good. Thank you so much. So young people, my advice to young people is that let us save our future. Please participate for yourself and when i mean for yourself look at the life expectancy of nigeria today which of course of is part of is 54 years old people die every day we have 60 percent youth less than 29 years old because there's no plan for the for the for the older generation and what we have to make sure is that we bring in a leader that understands that we need to take care of ourselves so I will encourage you, you see, we, uh, leadership is everything, it's extremely important. 
if not for your, if, if not because of yourself, even for the generation coming behind you, we have to participate. Don't let us be instruments in the hands of these politicians. These people are politicians, they are not leaders. They do not have plan for you and I. And it is extremely important. Uh, the future that we want to create, it is whatever we do today that we will meet there. Uh, if Ocean State University was started in 2006, and now people are enjoying it, it is what it did in the past that people are using now. Thank you so much, Dr. Ademola Bayonle. It has been a very wonderful session with you. And I believe that as we move on into the uh, our campaign proper, we'll still have time to, you know, to speak more on your agenda because I realized that we were unable to touch some sectors like security and all that. But because we don't have that time today. We believe we will still have time to sit down with you and still discuss more on your agenda for the people of Oshun. And thank you so much once again. Thank you. Yeah. That was our session with Dr. Ademola Bayoni, the candidate of the PIP, of the YPP, Young Democratic Party, and uh, he joined us from Agmogon, uh, uh, that is uh, the local government area, of Ayedade, sorry, Ayedade local government area of the state. So he was able to tell us what he has for the people of the state, the young one, and then what he will intends to do in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, health, and then how he wants to improve the hygiene of the state. And that's our session for today. Thank you for being part of it. But you know, as I do say every time, if you are eating about now, the registration is actually closed. But for those that have registered, you still have time to go and collect the PVC. What you have now, that is the temporary voter card, you cannot be used to vote. You need your PVC to vote. Please ensure you have your PVC. Go and collect your PVC, most especially young persons. Ensure you participate. Let us sit down let us on that election day let all of us sit and then uh, be part of that uh, process thank you so much for being part of today's show my name is jerry tiamu bye for now